Transaction gas. We talked about gas a little in earlier chapters. However, let's cover some basics about the role of the gas price and gas limits components of a transaction. Gas is the fuel of Ethereum. Gas is not Ether. It's a separate virtual currency with its own exchange rate against Ether. Ethereum uses gas to control the amount of resources that a transaction can use, since it will be processed on thousands of computers around the world. The open-ended Turing complete computation model requires some form of metering in order to avoid denial of service attacks or inadvertently resource devouring transactions. Gas is separate from ether in order to protect the system from the volatility that might arise along with rapid changes in the value of ether, and also as a way to manage the important and sensitive ratios between the costs of the various resources that gas pays for, namely computation, memory, and storage. The gas price field in the transaction allows the transaction originator to set the price they are willing to pay in exchange for gas. The price is measured in way per gas unit. For example, in the sample transaction in the intro chapter, your wallet set the gas price to three gig away. Tip: The popular site ETH Gas Station provides information on the current prices of gas and other relevant gas metrics for the Ethereum main network. Wallets can adjust the gas price in transactions they originate to achieve faster confirmation of transactions. The higher the gas price, the faster the transaction is likely to be confirmed. Conversely, low priority transactions can carry a reduced price, resulting in slower confirmation. The minimum value that gas price can be set to is zero, which means a fee-free transaction. During periods of low demand for space in a block, such transactions might very well get mined. Note: the minimum acceptable gas price is zero. That means that wallets can generate completely free transactions. Depending on capacity, these may never be confirmed. But there is nothing in the protocol that prohibits free transactions. You can find several examples of such transactions successfully included on the Ethereum blockchain. The Web3 interface offers a gas price suggestion by calculating a median price across several blocks. We can use the Trouble Console or any JavaScript Web3 console to do that. Web3.eth.get gas price. Invoked with the arguments console dot log gives s one e ten c a list with a single item ten billion. The second important field related to gas is gas limit. In simple terms, gas limit gives the maximum number of units of gas the transaction originator is willing to buy in order to complete the transaction. For simple payments, meaning transactions that transfer ether from one EOA to another EOA, the gas amount needed is fixed at 21,000 gas units. To calculate how much ether that will cost, you multiply 21,000 by the gas price you're willing to pay. For example, Web3.eth.get gas price called with the function console.log results times 21,000. Gives the result 210 trillion. If your transaction's destination address is a contract, then the amount of gas needed can be estimated but cannot be determined with accuracy. That's because a contract can evaluate different conditions that lead to different execution paths, with different total gas costs. The contract may execute only a simple computation or a more complex one. Depending on conditions that are outside of your control and cannot be predicted, to demonstrate this, let's look at an example. We can write a smart contract that increments a counter each time it is called, and executes a particular loop a number of times equal to the call counts. Maybe on the one hundredth call, it gives out a special price like a lottery, but needs to do additional computations to calculate the price. If you call the contract ninety-nine times, one thing happens, but on the one hundredth call, something very different happens. 
The amount of gas you would pay for that depends on how many other transactions have called that function before your transaction is included in a block. Perhaps your estimate is based on being the 99th transaction, but just before your transaction is confirmed, someone else calls the contract for the 99th time. Now you're the 100th transaction to call, and the computational effort and gas costs is much higher. To borrow a common analogy used in Ethereum, you can think of gas limits as the capacity of the fuel tank in your car. You fill the tank with as much gas as you think it will need for the journey. You can estimate the amounts to some degree, but there might be unexpected changes to your journey, such as a diversion, that increase fuel consumption. The analogy to a fuel tank is somewhat misleading, however. It's actually more like a credit account for a gas station company, where you pay after the trip is completed, based on how much gas you actually used, when you transmit your transaction. One of the first validation steps is to check that the account it originated from has enough ether to pay the gas price times gas limit. But the amount is not actually deducted from your account until the transaction finishes executing. You are only billed for gas actually consumed by your transaction, but you have to have enough balance for the maximum amount you are willing to pay before you send your transaction. Transaction Recipients the recipients of a transaction is specified in the to field. This contains a 20-byte Ethereum address. The address can be an EOA or a contract address. Ethereum does no further validation of this field. Any 20-byte value is considered valid. If the 20-byte value corresponds to an address without a corresponding private key or without a corresponding contract, the transaction is still valid. Ethereum has no way of knowing whether an address was correctly derived from a public key in existence. Warning: The Ethereum protocol does not validate recipient addresses in transactions. You can send to an address that has no corresponding private key or contract, thereby burning the Ether, rendering it forever unspendable. Validation should be done at the user interface level. Sending a transaction to the wrong address will probably burn the ether sent, rendering it forever inaccessible, since most addresses do not have a known private key and therefore no signature can be generated to spend it. It is assumed that validation of the address happens at the user interface level. See EIP55. In fact, there are a number of valid reasons for burning ether. For example, as a disincentive to cheating in payments channels and other smart contracts. And since the amount of Ether is finite, burning Ether effectively distributes the value burned to all Ether holders in proportion to the amount of Ether they hold. Transaction value and data. The main payload of a transaction is contained in two fields, value and data. Transactions can have both value and data, only value, only data, or neither value nor data. All four combinations are valid. A transaction with only value is a payment. A transaction with only data is an invocation. A transaction with both value and data is both a payment and an invocation. A transaction with neither value nor data, well, that's probably just a waste of gas, but it is still possible. Let's try all of these combinations. First, we will set the source and destination address from our wallet, just to make the demo easier to read. Source equals the zeroth element of web3.eth.accounts. Dest equals the first element of web3.eth.accounts. Our first transaction contains only a value and no data payload. web3.eth.send transaction from source to Dest value web three dot utils dot two way of zero point zero one comma ether data empty string. Our wallet shows a confirmation screen indicating the value to send. The next example specifies both a value and a data payload. Web three dot eth dot send transaction from source to dest value web three dot utils dot two way zero point zero one ether. Data 0x1234. 
Our wallet shows a confirmation screen indicating the value to send as well as the data payload. The next transaction includes a data payload that specifies a value of zero. Web3.eth.send transaction from source to dest value zero data 0x1234. Our wallet shows a confirmation screen indicating the zero value and the data payload. Finally, the last transaction includes neither a value to send nor a data payload. Web3.eth.send transaction from source to dest value zero data empty string. Our wallet shows a confirmation screen indicating zero value.